Okay, very quickly, guys. This is our lesson two. And we're going to be looking at everything that has to do with compounds. Oh, yes. So, very, very interestingly, well, when we are looking at compounds, the big question is, what should we know? What is it that Jam we always ask? What is it that we will not feel to ask us? That's it tight. Let's go together. In compounds, first thing first, like it to know that compounds are substances which contain two or more elements chemically combined together. In other words, substances that contain two or more elements that are chemically combined together. So first and foremost, is it just one element here? No. Two or what? More elements. But these two or more elements, how are they combined? They are combined chemically together. If you get that very fast, don't forget this, that there are characteristics of compounds that they want us to know. What are the various characteristics that makes your compound to stand out? They include the following. Number one character is called chemical combination. We said two or more elements. Compounds are substances that contain two or more elements. That means more than one element, but are what chemically combined together. That chemically combined together is talking about their chemical combination. So in chemical combination, you must note this, that compounds are the result of chemical change. Ay, ay, ay. There are two types of changes. There's what is called your physical change and there's what is called your chemical change. C for compounds, C for chemical change. So your compounds, are they the result of physical changes or the result of chemical changes? The results of your what? Your chemical changes is what bets your what? Your compound. And as a result of that, Compounds are formed where atoms of different elements, sure you are seeing it now, not one element, but different elements, they bond together to form molecules with entirely new properties. For example, hydrogen, an element, is coming to combine with another element like oxygen. So what will be formed there? What is formed there at the end of the day is a, what a compound is formed. Because two different elements, two or more, they can be two, they can be three, they can be four, they can be five, but they are coming together to combine together and they are also obeying some fixed set of rules. What do you have? Compound is formed at the end of the day. Another property is what is called fixed composition. So this is one difference between compound and your mixtures. Your compounds have what is called fixed composition. So by Fixed composition here, yeah, what are we referring to very quickly? You must know this, that compounds have a fixed composition with a specific ratio of atoms. Now, let me explain. If hydrogen is combining with oxygen, what am I going to have? I'm going to have water, and water is H2O. Here you see. Now, what is the ratio of hydrogen to oxygen that will form water? Hydrogen here is 2. Oxygen here is 1. So that's why H2. Hydrogen. H2O2. Now follow me very quickly. Now see they now put 2 here. I will explain as we move. You are going to understand the chemistry behind all of this. And then there is now going to be 2 here. But we are going to just carry your H2O. Normal water. What happens to water there? How many, how many hydrogen do we have here? 2 atoms of hydrogen. And what atom of what oxygen? So hydrogen ratio oxygen is two ratio what one. So they always have fixed ratio. It's not that you just go and carry two atoms of hydrogen, two atoms of oxygen, and you combine them together. If you carry two atoms of hydrogen, two atoms of oxygen, you are going to have H two O two, and that is called hydrogen peroxide. No longer water. So if it is water that must be formed, right? You need fixed ratio. If it is hydrogen peroxide. If you carry two atoms of hydrogen, two atoms of oxygen, hydrogen peroxide is formed, which is also a compound. But two atoms of hydrogen, one atom of oxygen, water is better. That's why we say they have fixed composition. And that fixed composition means specific ratio must be followed. Another thing very fast is that, for example, you see water that I have analyzed for you. It will always, whether water in America, whether water in Ghana, whether water in Uganda, water in Nigeria, it will always contain what? Two hydrogen atoms and what? One oxygen what atom for water to be formed. And that's why it is called fixed composition. Number one character of compound is called chemical combination. Number two is called fixed composition. And then number three, which is the third, is called distinct properties. So is it called distinct properties? Hold on a bit. The complete series of classes, right? As far as your 
syllabus is concerned regarding your jam awaek. Everything has been covered in details for you in the LearnLift app. And guess what? The sweet part is that you have access to your CBT, right? You have access to your video lessons. You have access to your notes. You have access to your past questions. Everything from the beginning to the end is directly in the LearnLift app for you. So all you have to do is just mark down to Play Store or App Store and download the LearnLift app where you follow all your classes from the beginning to the end. A quick one before we move. Let's get back to class. Enjoy. By distinct properties, what do we refer to? Don't forget is that compounds are a unique property that is distinct from their constituent elements. I, a good example is your water that we have said, like your water is H2O2. You know, for water to be formed, hydrogen we combine with oxygen. Now listen to this. The properties of hydrogen are different from the properties of oxygen. In fact, the properties of hydrogen and oxygen are different from the properties of water. Despite hydrogen and oxygen are the elements that form water, the properties of that water that is formed is entirely and completely different from the properties of water. That's how we said that water is liquid at room temperature, one of the properties. Unlike hydrogen that is gaseous, Oxygen also is gaseous. Sure, you see, but the water that they are now forming is liquid at what room temperature. So the property of the elements that will come together to come and form compound are entirely different from the property of the compound itself that is formed. So very fast, what are the properties of compound? I gave you three of them. The three properties are number one, chemical combination, right? Oh yes. Number two is called fixed composition. Number three is called distinct properties. That's why we said that your compounds are substances, right, that contain two or more elements chemically what combined together. That's why they are chemically combined together by chemical combination. Of course, they have what fixed composition and distinct what properties. Can I now show to you? You see, this is exactly I'm preparing for. The sweet thing is this. You must know compounds and their formulas. You don't know it, you just go and choose. What are the various compounds and formulas that are very important and fundamental that we should know? Let's go. Number one is called water. Even if you are sleeping and they tap you, water is what? H2O. Number two is called sand. What is the formula for sand? Sand is SiO2. SiO2 is your sand. Silicon oxide is called sand. Some people like calling it silica, silica, sand. Are you getting it now? Number one, water, H2, sand, SiO2. Please, if I ask you any, if you see me in the dream, tell me these formulas, all of them, I'm about to give it to you. Number three is called your limestone. What's the formula for limestone? CaCO3. Come on, CaCO3. Whether you call it your limestone, you call it your chalk, you call it your marble, you call it aragonite, you call it eggshell, all of them have the same formula. C is C O3. That's your limestone. Number four is common salt. Your normal common salt used at home is your NaCl. That's your sodium chloride. Are you seeing it now? Number five is called your ethanol. What's formula for ethanol? You must not play with this one. Ethanol is what C2H5OH. Again, C2H5OH ethanol. Water H2O. Sand SiO2. Limestone C is CO3. That's calcium hydrocarbonate. Four. Common salt is your what? NaCl. Ethanol is what? C2H5OH. Ethanol. All I want you to know is know their formulas. Number six is called your washing soda. Washing soda is Na2CO3.10H2O. Let's go. One, two, go. Everybody. Na2CO3.10H2O. Come on. Na2CO3.10H2O. That's your sodium trioxocarbonate for decahydrate what is it called sodium trioxocarbonate for decahydrate that's the formula for washing soda can i fire down another is called your caustic soda caustic soda from the name soda soda sodium soda sodium caustic soda the formula is naoh caustic soda you are out of there don't play number eight is called caustic potash potash can you tell me where they got the potash from potash Potassium, potassium, right? So potassium is what? KOH. That's caustic potash. Potassium is K. But caustic potash is KOH. That's your what? Your potassium hydroxide. 
Sodium hydroxide is caustic soda. Potassium hydroxide is caustic potash. Don't play with any of the two of them. Number nine is called quick lime. Quick lime, the formula is short. That's why it is quick. <laughs> I like putting it that way. The formula is just short. Where is quick lime? C P O. Quick lime. Cashew oxide. That's your quick lime. And then number ten is called your slake lime. Slake lime. Slake lime is your calcium hydroxide. That's your C A O H two. That's the formula. What is your slake lime? C A O H two is your what? Your slake lime. Give me formula for washing soda. Washing soda is your what? Na two C O three does ten H two O. Soda. Soda. I told you anyway. Yes, soda. Now soda is your sodium, right? But washing soda. Soda. Na two C O three does ten H two O. That sodium trioxocarbonate for decahydrates. Caustic soda is NaOH. Say so it now. Caustic soda, NaOH soda. Caustic potash, KOH. Potash, caustic potash. Your quick lime is CaO. Quick lime, CaO. Slaked lime is your what? CaOH2. That's your what? Your, um, your calcium hydroxide. And then you're out of there. Are you seeing it now? Number 11 is the one we call sucrose. Sucrose is also called granulated sugar. And what's the formula for granulated sugar? C12, H22, O11. Don't play o. C12, H22, O11. Sucrose. And sucrose, let me give you a secret. Sucrose is disaccharide. They have monosaccharide, disaccharides, right? Uh -huh. Monosaccharide, disaccharides, your oligosaccharides, and all of that. Your MLS, just your MLS, maltose, lactose, sucrose. All of them are disaccharides. And then we also have what is called lactose. Lactose, the same formula. C12, H22, O11. Are you seeing it now? See also disaccharide. All these formulas I've given to you, if you forget any of these 12 formulas I've given to you, I'll not be happy with you. So run through them very fast. If you catch that very quickly with me, guess what? I'll see you in the next lesson. And that lesson I'm going to see is our lesson 3. I'm going to look at everything about your mixtures. I'll see you there. Bye bye. Wait, before you go, don't forget very fast that the formulas I gave you, all of them are past questions. you see them when we get to the past question segment. See you in the next class. Enjoy. Hope you've enjoyed this class. Guess what? To follow up for more classes, just download the LearnLift app, whether on Play Store or App Store, and then follow up your classes. You must do extremely well. I'll see you in class. Bye-bye.